want to pass the GED math exam, you need to know what to study. In this video, I'll start to lay out exactly what it is that you need to know to score a 145 and pass the GED math exam. First of all, there are three levels that you can pass the GED exams on. The bare minimum score to pass is 145. If you can score 165 or higher, you're considered college ready. And if you can pass at 175 or higher, you're considered college ready plus, and there's the potential to earn some college credits for your score. Depending on what you're planning to do after you pass the GED, you might have a goal to pass at any one of those levels. I've discussed this more in depth in my video about how long it takes to pass the GED, so if you'd like to check that out, I'll post it up here and down below. But all that is to say that there's a lot of questions on the GED math exam that you don't need to get correct if you just want to pass at 145 so that you can get your high school equivalency credential. This is true especially if you're not planning to pursue college after you get your GED. In order to score 145, you need to master a limited number of specific specific skills, and you don't have to worry about some of the more advanced skills that are on the test. In fact, in order to pass the test, you don't have to know any math beyond what is typically taught in a ninth grade Algebra 1 class. There is some geometry as well as a small amount of statistics and probability, but nothing beyond what's supposed to be taught in an 8th grade level math class according to the Common Core Standards. If you're not at the place where you can pass at this level yet, don't worry, we will get you there. But what I really want you to take away from this is that it is not impossible to pass the math exam, and there's nothing too scary or advanced on the test. There's nothing from Algebra 2 or Trigonometry, no advanced statistics, and certainly no calculus. So you've got this. Now let's talk about exactly what you need to know. We're going to break it into four sections. Operations with rational numbers, geometry and measurement, expressions and equations, and graphs and functions. Those first two sections are the math topics that are typically covered in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And the second two sections are the Algebra 1 topics. Today, I'm just going to go over a high-level view of what you need to know for the first section, operations with rational numbers. Having a better idea of what you're trying to study can help you focus your attention on the best resources for you. So this first section is all about operations with rational numbers. And I'm going to talk about the first seven skills that you need to master to be able to score that 145 in this section. The first skill that you need to master is to be able to put a series of fractions and decimals in order. In practice, this probably means that you need to be able to convert fractions to decimals and vice versa so that you can compare them. This is typically one of the questions on the section of the test where you don't get to use a calculator, so you need to be able to do this by hand. It's helpful to memorize the decimal equivalents of the so-called benchmark fractions, like one-half, one-third, one-fourth, one-fifth, one-eighth. If you know these, you can multiply them so that you can find other fractions like three-eighths, four-fifths, two-thirds, and so on. That brings us to our next skill, number two. You need to be able to do operations like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with integers, fractions, and decimals. Integers are positive or negative counting numbers. And decimals and fractions are the way that we represent numbers that are in between integers. Of course, on most of the tests, you'll be able to use your calculator for computation. But there are always questions with fractions, decimals, and integers on the section where you don't have your calculator. It's also wise to get more comfortable with these skills if you are not because it takes a long time to type every question into the calculator and you don't have an unlimited amount of time on this test. So even though you have a calculator, you wanna be using it to check your work, not necessarily to do the work. Sometimes it is faster to do it in your brain if you've been practicing those skills. Skill number three, you need to have a working operation of exponents. You need to know what they are, what they mean, and how to evaluate them. In particular, at this level, you should be familiar with squares and square roots and cubes and cubed roots. Squares are numbers to the second power, or multiplied by themselves two times, and cubes are numbers to the third power, or multiplied by themselves three times. Finding square roots and cubed roots means that you're able to think about what is the number that I multiplied by itself two times or three times to get this bigger number. Number four, you need to have an understanding of absolute value. This means the distance that a number is from zero on a number line. You need to be able to apply this knowledge to find the distance between two numbers on a number line, usually a positive and a negative number. Number five, you need to be able to determine when an expression is undefined. The big reason that this happens is when you try to divide by zero, which is not possible. If you're going through a problem and at some point you end up with a zero in the denominator of the problem or in the bottom of the fraction, that problem is undefined. 
Number six, and this is a big skill in this section, is being able to use ratios and proportions to solve problems. In particular, this often means being able to use unit rates or finding out how much one of something costs when you're given the price for multiples of that item. Scale factors like determining how far something is away from something else in real life when you're given a scale on a map. And finding percentages given a part and a whole or finding a part or a whole given a percentage. And number seven, the last big skill in this section, is being able to solve numerical problems that require multiple steps. This is mostly about reading the problem and understanding what it is asking of you. So for example, there might be a word problem where you need to subtract and then multiply to find the answer. So it's important that you are reading so that you know, does my answer make sense? Am I actually answering this question? So those are the seven skills that you need in this category, operations with rational numbers, to score 145 on the GED math test. There are other skills in this category that you could master to get a higher score, but these are the skills that you need to pass. These are also in a big way the foundational skills that allow you to do well in the other three categories of math skills. So if you're just starting to study and you feel like you don't have a handle on these things, it is really a great place for you to start and get some practice in. I've mentioned before that although there is not any specific GED practice on Khan Academy, it is definitely the best place to do math practice, especially for these types of foundational skills. I'll also put a link below to the Kaplan GED test prep manual, but you could also use any test prep manual that your local library has available to borrow. And since it is helpful to practice with the calculator that you'll be allowed to use on the test, I'll also link that below. If you're starting to study for the GED math test, it's really great to get that and be using it while you study. I post new videos every Monday about how to study better so that you can achieve your goals. And in the coming weeks, I'll be discussing the remaining three sections of math skills that you need so that you can pass the GED math exam. So please subscribe if you'd like to learn more. If this video was helpful to you, please press the like button so that YouTube knows to share it with other studiers. Thank you for watching as always. Until next time, happy studying.